All right, guys, Jack Spirico here. We're kind of getting on uh, short strokes with getting this system actually growing some stuff. I got a whole bunch of stuff here. Before I start today, I want to tell you, you don't need to use everything I use, and you don't need to use all of this, and a lot of times I don't, but I've got it all here, so I thought I would use it and give me a good uh, chance to talk about some products that I really like uh, that I recommend. Some are my core products that are my core fertility program, and some of them, honestly, are some products that probably should be in some are products that you know I can get them locally anytime I want and they're good products so I use them when I don't have what I would prefer. Let's start off with uh, the core fertilizer that I recommend for uh, any type of backyard gardening uh, with vegetables and this is a uh, Dr. Earth 444 premium gold fertilizer. This is this is my core fertility uh, booster right here. This and compost really is all you, you really need. Um, what I love about this stuff, number one, that 444, so it's a balanced uh, NPK ratio, which I think is great. I don't like to blow up one side of it too much, even though we're going to put some extra nitrogen out today to kickstart this system and the interaction with the, uh, uh, the, the mulch that we'll, we'll show you here in a minute. Anyway, uh, but the other thing that I really love about this stuff is the, the sheer number of mycorrhizal bacterium that are, and fungi that are in it. It's... Uh, it's a huge list. I'm not going to try to read off all this Latin, but that whole area there covered by my hand is nothing but beneficial microorganisms. So this stuff is fantastic. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go through these, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, reposition the camera, do another video where I'm going to put everything down, and that way you'll know what I say when I'm doing Dr. Earth, you'll know what it is. So core right here. Next up, good old Garrett juice. Um, I will do... A good soil drench with this probably a couple weeks into this system to kind of give it another kickstart. Today, what I've done with it's all we're going to do, and that is that it went into the water that's over there in the kiddie pool. You can't see right now where the mulch is soaking. This is one of the things that went in there, and I used probably about three or four ounces of this to go in there. And I'll, again, I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. But Garrett juice is one of my uh, my core fertility products as well. Uh, I use this primarily as a foliar feed, and I also do dump it into the new aquaponic system straight into the water to get them off the ground and running. Um, if you want to know how to make this, again, I talked about it in my last video. You can make it yourself or you can buy it from Medina, and I, I really just, it's easier on me just to go ahead and buy it. Uh, next up, um, GS Plant Foods Liquid Kelp. Uh, this is another one of my core fertility products that I recommend for all of your organic backyard gardening type stuff. Uh, just follow the instructions on the label, use it uh, as it's directed. I use this both as a foliar uh, feed and as a soak, but it works really best as a foliar feed. And what I usually do is whenever I'm doing a foliar feed, that means spraying uh, like a, a diluted solution onto the plant. So we get a sprayer, put some garret juice in it, and I put some of the liquid kelp in there as well. Probably only about a half an ounce. It's really mineral rich. And it's the main thing we're doing here. And we'll spray our plants with those. Next, the Garrett juice has horticultural molasses in it. Uh, this is just liquid agricultural molasses. However, I'm really going to be trying to kickstart an awful lot of biological life off in this system. Uh, I like living systems. That's what I want to grow in. People think aquaponics is, you know, growing in some sterile environment. They're out of their minds, you know. But I want to put as much life into the system as possible. This extra boost of molasses will give those microorganisms something to munch on. And that's, that's kind of really important to kicking them off. So uh, another couple ounces of this stuff also went into the, uh, the mulch soak that's going on over there right now. So that mulch soak has a few ounces of garret juice, a few ounces of liquid molasses, and a few ounces of the liquid kelp. So that's all been done already. Um, I'm going to do something that I'm, I might be the last time I ever try. I've never successfully grown more than a handful of mushrooms in my life. This just really ain't the climate for it, but I figure that environment's going to be perfect. And if nothing else, I'm going to get a good uh, fungal inoculation from this stuff. This is uh, uh, King Strephoria mushroom, also known as giant garden mushroom. These are supposed to be the ones you can grow them in the sun, you can grow them anywhere, you can't keep them from growing once they start. Yeah, I've, I've been through a lot of this stuff, but I went ahead and picked up a five pound block of this. We use about a handful of this in the leaf litter and mulch that we're going to put down. And again, not, nothing else, it's more fungal activity. That's not something I'm going to say you absolutely should do, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Uh, that's not part of my core fertility program. This is, this is uh, Sustainable Agricultural Technologies Mycorrhizal Fungi. There's four species of mycorrhizal fungi here. Again, I'm not going to embarrass myself with my limited ability to speak Latin trying to pronounce them. 
Uh, several of them are actually in the Dr. Earth product, but they're in very small quantities. This is a massive quantity of this, these little guys. Um, so I use this kind of to boost that fungal activity through the roof. And when I do transplants, and, and I'm gonna put a little bit of this down uh, in, our, in all the beds that we're doing here to, to get that uh, fungal life up in there. But really what I do with this, I keep it in a coffee can. You can find an old school coffee can. And all I like to do with it is when I'm doing transplants and I'm putting a plant from a pot into a bed, I sprinkle just a little bit of it straight on the roots. And I have done that, two containers side by side, same plants, everything else the same. And when you use this, it's like increasing that plant's root system is really what happens. Those uh, mycorrhizal fungi, what they do is they spread out through the, the entire soil network like a system of roots and attach to the plant's roots. And they share with the plant. They give the plant some of it, what it needs and the plant gives the fungi some of what it needs. It's a symbiotic relationship. It's the way nature does it. So again, th this is in my core fertility product. I'll have a link in the video notes where you can see all the stuff that's in my core fertility program. If you use those items, you're never going to have a problem. Now, I got a couple more things here. One, I wanted to be able to give you guys that maybe don't want to order this stuff off Amazon or whatever, because I found this is kind of hard to find in most retail outlets. I wanted to give you another option. And since uh, I was going to do that, I figured, well, you know, diversity is good, so we'll throw a little bit of this on the surface when we, uh, when we do the beds up too. But this is uh, Epsoma Organic Fertilizer. I do not like this as much as the Dr. Earth. It does have colony forming bacterium in it, uh, a much smaller amount and a much less diverse species. But it is a fairly balanced product. It's a 3-4-4 product. So you might wanna add a little bit of uh, blood meal, which is a pure nitrogen product. If you're going to go with this instead of the Dr. Earth to bring that nitrogen up just a little bit. But it is a very affordable product. This bag here is, uh, how much do these weigh? Eight pounds. And it costs about the same as a four pound bag of Dr. Earth. So it's about half the price. You will not have a bad garden if you use this stuff. I've used this and I've used the Dr. Earth. In my opinion, the Dr. Earth is a superior product. That's why I'm willing to pay a little bit more for it. In the end, none of this stuff's very expensive at a gardener level. If we were farming a couple acres, you know, this stuff would add up in price. But when you can pick up a, a bag of this stuff for eight bucks and it lasts you a season in 20 or 30 beds, it's, it's really an insignificant expense overall in your operation. But we'll use some of this. It's actually a very similar product in the base of it. Feather meal, bone meal, blood meal, making up the NPK ratios, etc. cetera. Uh, it just doesn't quite have the biological kick that the uh, Dr. Earth does. We have it, so why not use it? And we are going to be putting down a thick layer of wood chips, in this case cypress mulch, uh, at, a, at a depth of about an inch and a half, two inches. People get really weird about that. You know, the wood chips are going to take up nitrogen. With everything I just showed you, if we put those wood chips on there and uh, just go from there, we're not going to have any problems. I've done this a million times. I've never had wood chips take up too much nitrogen, but they do take up some. And I don't see that as a problem. I see it as an opportunity because eventually they give it back. So when I'm starting a new bed like this, what I like to do is put down some blood meal. Uh, this stuff is pure nitrogen. It's like 15, 12 parts nitrogen. And it's a, so it's a 12 zero, 0 I'll just put down a thin layer of this stuff uh, right at the very top of the, the leaf litter and all the other fertility we're going to put on there. And we're going to go ahead and put the, the wood chips in direct contact with this stuff. They will begin to bond with nitrogen. They will begin that you know slow composting, nitrogen carbon cycle and breakdown. And they will take most of this particular product up because it's so bioavailable and so easy for them to do it. And we're going to put them in direct contact in a wet state. And it's always going to be damp because it's a wicking bed. That's great though. What we're doing with this mulch over here, I'm going to come get the camera now and I want to kind of show you what we've done here is we are going to, this is going to be a little odd looking here, <laughs> but let me get that a little lower. Real time, true real world editing here, folks. Non-editing, I guess I should say, but right there, you can see how we've done this this pool. It's a kiddie pool full of water, and it's soaking all this other stuff. And let me uh, get this back where you can see me again. All right. So you can see we just got that mulch soaking wet. And uh, I got one more thing to show you here in a second. But this is going to, again, be in direct contact with that high nitrogen blood meal. And then I've got one little bit of magic left to go in with this. 
remember when uh, I was talking about making the soil mix and I said, you know, use what you have. Um, don't necessarily, don't get married to the things I have. If you don't have expanded shell, use something else, uh, what have you. Um, I also said that there was a big pile of oak leaves that builds up outside the front of my house. That's this stuff right here. Look at that. And it's a mixture of completely composted material, half broken down leaves and pretty fresh leaves. And there's an old driveway out in the front. It's kind of in a tree clump now. We don't get all anal with how we do our landscaping around here. And uh, so we just leave it alone. And it builds up about that deep. And as it breaks down, new leaves are just coming up. So there are, I'm sure there's pill bugs, which are a type of isopod. I'm sure there's some worm castings in there. I'm sure there's some earwigs. I'm sure there's some stuff in there I'd actually prefer not be in this. I'm not gonna worry about it. Because there's so much biodiversity uh, diversity and fungal activity and, and, and real, real life stuff in there that's good, that outweighs the bad, we're gonna use it. Now, where would you get this? Uh, any woodlot you can go to where you can, you know, dig in the leaves and dig past that first layer of duff and take, you know, it's just per bed. I'm just using a five gallon bucket and really about four gallons of it full. I don't have it out here because I forgot to do it. But uh, when I get repositioned and we do all this, I'm also going to be using some biochar. I've got a five gallon bucket full of uh, charcoal in there that we made in a kiln that somebody sent me to give a try to and it worked pretty well. Uh, it's called Broken Down. So we're going to throw just a couple of handfuls of that in there too. Uh, yet another little boost and that'll be it so when i do this now and i say what something is hopefully you'll know what it is i'm sure these two videos are going to spark a lot of questions give them to me uh this is a weekend when i'm filming this i should get this up by monday at the latest sometime during the, the this coming week i'll try to get all answers to your questions back to you but let me get things set up now so we can get this thing uh put to bed for real